You might ask how come I'm going back and reviewing all this stuff. Well, I kind of had a rude wake-up call a little while back when my, my son came home and basically told me that all my videos suck. So I went back and started reflecting on that a little bit and then realized that while I was doing a whole bunch of these videos about just living life, I really never put a whole lot of thought into going back and referencing those. I figured it was just sort of rambling through life and you kind of ramble on through. But, God help you if you want to go back and actually find how to do anything, because there's nothing in the titles that gives you even a freaking clue. So, I figured, well, maybe it's time to go back and reflect a little bit and do a couple of how-tos in... Look at that. What did you just see? That was removing a bearing from a case. And I didn't have to use a hammer. I didn't have to do a darn thing except for drop that case on that piece of wood and guess what, it flopped right out. Now I know that's being a little bit dramatic, but what we're gonna do is just review how to change a bearing in a case. And it doesn't matter if it's a 372 or any other kind of case, just as long as it's a situation where you have a steel bearing steel races, and aluminum or magnesium case. It's the same problem. It's the same solution. It doesn't matter if it's motorcycles, outboards, saws, 372s, four, well, 455s, the plastic ones, I'd melt them. Uh, steel or husky or anything else, it's the same darn thing. Is you want to minimize, you really want to minimize the stress of having that steel out of race push its way out and peel out just a little bit of aluminum or magnesium thereby ever so slightly uh, opening up that bearing pocket push out that uh, seal i think By the way, there's nothing wrong with that seal. Probably use it again. So basically, the whole game here is, especially if you're building saws, is you want to minimize two things. One, stress on that case. And two, the possibility of having a misaligned bearing when you install it, peel up a little bit of aluminum, and therefore when the bearing actually seats against the pocket at the end there, if there's a little sliver of aluminum, that means the bearing is going to be a little bit of an angle. So the whole idea of using hammers, presses, yeah, while it gets the bearing in and out, uh, you're adding a discontinuity in the matrix of life, so to speak, in that you can add a problem that you don't even know you have until your saw comes apart. So over the years... Uh, starting with motorcycles, moving forward, I developed a technique that was actually instructed to me by a fellow named Ralph Spencer about using heat differential to remove bearings from soft metal cases, be it aluminum. And that means just basically expand the whole series, and the aluminum or magnesium expands a little bit faster than the steel. So usually what happens is you get to a certain temperature, there's been enough differential in how they expand, the steel will release, come out, or go in. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to let that cool down. And I'm going to let this bearing cool down. I have another set of cases in the turkey oven there. But I'm going to let uh, warm up. Now you might ask, well, geez, man, I've seen a lot of your videos and you've done it all kinds of different ways. Well, the reason I did that was just to prove that you can, not, not necessarily discuss best practices. But what we're doing here is we're absolutely talking about best practices. And the best way of doing it is making sure you have a, a temperature differential between uh, the bearing in the case where it slips right in, heat the case up, chill the bearing, or when you have to get it out, bring the temperature up to the point where 
you're not going to damage anything and the bearing is going to expand slower than the case. It'll fall out on its own. So that's what we're doing with this one. I don't know if we're there yet. No. Well, we're just going to do it anyway. I'm going to get this bearing out of here. See if it'll come out on its own. This case is only about 200 degrees, so I'm going to have to help it a little bit. Okay. And this is what you don't want to do. This is the definition of loose. If I let that case go back in there and actually get to temperature, that one would have dropped right out, just like the one I did in the first part of the demonstration. Anytime you start hammering, anytime you do that, this is what you've got to think about, is that outer race is now an interference fit to this, this is cooled down now, piece of aluminum. So as you jam that out, it's going to roll off just a little bit of aluminum with it. And now that bearing pocket's just a little bit uh, larger in diameter than it was before. So, in my most humble opinion, you've got two bearings here, right? Let's just chill them down. We're going to put one bearing in the other case. Let's just get them all warmed up. And we're going to do it without a hammer. I'm just going to simply do it by heat differential alone. And by doing that, if I drop this bearing in just with my finger and it slips right to the bottom, I have not had any chance of peeling up a little piece of aluminum that would block the side of the bearing from actually uh, getting all the way to the bottom of the pocket. So I know my bearing will be square and I haven't done any degradation to the wall of that bearing pocket so that I know that I haven't in any way, shape, or form made it larger than it was before. So I'm going to finish letting those cases heat up and then uh, I'm going to let these bearings cool down and we're just going to set them right in there and see how easy it is. Hopefully I'll be able to show that those bearings will go right into those cases without a hammer, without a punch, without a press and I know they will seat right against the bottom of that pocket and I know they will be square. So the OCD part of me can't just be quiet, right, while I'm waiting for those cases to heat up. And I happen to have my uh, temperature, my laser point and shoot thermometer upstate New York doing the outboard type things. So I don't have that here, so I just gotta let it cook. These are the two bearings I got out. Neither of them are particularly any good. Oh, this one's all right. Yeah, they're both SKF steel cage, which is good. This one's actually really nice. Dirty, but it runs all right. Because this is a small mount, the 2063, look at the options you have. Now remember, the idea of a saw like this would be lightweight, less vibration, possibly chain speed for things like limbing, right? So I could blend a speed cut to it, it'd fit. But then I'd have to change the sprocket over to a 325, right? But you can. So one option for this saw is to put the largest diameter, put the largest diameter uh, rim sprocket on it I can to get as much chain speed out of a 325 chain, like a 9 tooth. Uh, right now it has a 7 tooth 3 8 and just to drill down a little bit on large mount versus small mount for the people who don't know, you see that case right there? You see the tail of the bar? It matches, right? Small mount. This is what a large mount looks like, which is most of my other saws. It's quite a bit larger. So this would not fit on that saw. But look what I found. Look at this. Look at this. Sujihara, 325, and even better, Sujihara, 3.8 small mount. So this would actually fit right on. That would be the right bar. I just have to come up with a chain for it. Look at that. Wouldn't that be a cool looking saw? 
So we may do that. I haven't decided if I'm going to stick with uh, 3 8 or am I going to dive into the 325 chain and go for chain speed. So let me know in the comments if any of that makes any sense and is of interest. But this saw right here is going to get something. <laughs> and these are the options I have in the shop right now. So it has to be either that Sujihara 3.8, the Sujihara 325, 18, or the Speed Cut 20. This guy goes back up on the shelf. Well, actually, I can let it cool down these bearings even more. Now, for those people who are looking for numbers, I like to get my cases about 350 degrees. I don't have the seals in, nothing like that, so there's no plastic. I certainly don't put nylon cage bearings back in any saw that I build if I can help it. Of course, you have to with things like the new 500 series because that's the only bearings that are available. But for the old 372s, you can go find Natchez or SKFs with a steel cage. And uh, like these right here, this is an SKF. That's a nice bearing. That's a really nice bearing. And the other thing is, there's no reason why, you, if you can only find them with seals, just buy them with the seals and peel the seal covers off. You know? But there's lots and lots of options for those bearings. And with the, uh, with the 372s, these are all, you know, the size of 6202s. And they usually use a classification of uh, C3s. See, I've been away from this so long, I don't have a stock. I usually have a stock of SKF bearings, the steel cages, and you can get them right from your Husqvarna dealer. They have a different part number than the uh, nylon cages that go on the, uh, the x torques. For that matter, if you go and get the SKU from a 346, one of those saws, that would be a steel cage to SKF bearing, and that works in the 372s. It just has to be a 6202 C3 uh, bearing. It'll fit right in a 372. So, here, let me pull one of these cases out. I don't know if they're the temperature yet, but I suspect they're probably pretty close. That's how I put my bearings in, just like that. There's one. There's two. And by doing it this approach, turn that off, is I did not have to tap, I did not have to bang. Uh, there's no, it's oil on there. I didn't really clean them up. Um, these are 350 degrees, and those bearings were probably sitting around maybe 60 degrees. And I don't have to tap or anything. I mean, I don't have to do any of this because they're already to the bottom of that pocket. And there's no chance because the actual pocket is large enough that they slip right in when they cool they'll bite. So there's no chance of me peeling up any of magnesium or aluminum to get in between the back of that race. Imagine peeling up a little aluminum and then all of a sudden now the bearing sits at the bottom at an angle. These are square. They're sitting right at the bottom of that bearing pocket and they're ready to go. So that's a demonstration on how to put bearings in any kind of a case.